Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about genetic recombination in bacteria. Bacteria cells have this really cool ability to obtain extra DNA through various mechanisms that can give them extra functionality. What this means is they can pull DNA from different places using a few different mechanisms, and the DNA may enable them to be resistant to some type of antibiotic. It may enable them to gain a virulence factor, so something that allows them to establish or maintain uh, an infection of a host. Um, or it can give them the ability to produce toxins. These are all examples of ways that bacteria can benefit from genetic recombination. The three types of genetic recombination are called transformation, conjugation, and transduction. I have videos on all three of these types, so you can check those out. In this video, we are talking about conjugation. Conjugation is made possible by a plasmid that is extra chromosomal DNA. So what this means is it is circular DNA that is separate from the actual bacteria's chromosomal DNA. In particular, this plasmid is called a conjugative plasmid. You might also hear it referred to as a fertility plasmid. The reason that this plasmid makes conjugation possible is because in addition to any other genes that it may encode, so genes for antibiotic resistance or for a virulence factor, it also encodes genes for something called a sex pillus. And it is this sex pillus which enables conjugation to happen. The actual definition of conjugation is the transfer of genetic material from one bacteria cell to another bacteria cell by direct cell-to-cell -cell contact. That direct cell-to-cell -cell contact is made possible by the sex pillus. For example, if you have a bacteria here that has this conjugative or fertility plasmid, this is called an F plus cell. This fertility plasmid encodes genes for a sex pillus. This is basically a cellular structure that allows the F plus cell to connect with an F minus cell. So a cell that does not already have this plasmid. Then the conjugated plasmid is able to transfer a copy of itself from the F plus cell to the F minus cell in a process of conjugation. Now that we have talked about the basics of conjugation, let's look at the mechanism in a little bit more detail. Here we start with our F plus cell that has the fertility plasmid, here drawn in red, and an F minus cell, which lacks the fertility plasmid. Both of these cells have chromosomal DNA as well. This is in black. Now remember that the fertility plasmid codes for the sex pillus. It is the sex pillus that enables the direct cell-to-cell -cell contact needed for conjugation to occur. Here we have our F plus cell, which is our donor cell. It contains this fertility plasmid that is capable of replicating itself, and then the copy of that fertility plasmid goes through the sex pillus and enters the recipient cell cytoplasm. The result of this is we have our original F plus cell. It still has its fertility plasmid, but now that recipient cell has a copy of the fertility plasmid as well. So now it is also considered an F plus cell. So it is capable of repeating this process, which is one of the possibilities that may occur next where you get this newly made F-positive cell 
basically starting this process over again. Also remember that the fertility plasma contains not only the DNA necessary to make the sex pillow, it also can contain other genes that can give the cells um, something, something additional, something we didn't have before. Either genes required to help them survive in an unfriendly environment, genes that confer resistance to some sort of antibiotic. So for, exist, for, for example, this new F plus cell, now that it's gained this plasma, it might be resistant to streptomycin, which means if it's infecting a human host, streptomycin is no longer going to work to be able to cure that infection. So in addition to this possibility of this cell continuing to share these genes with other F minus cells through the process of conjugation, something else can happen as well. That's drawn here. This is when we have the chromosomal DNA that has actually allowed the fertility plasmid DNA to integrate into the chromosomes. So if the fertility plasma integrates into the bacterial chromosome, so now we have one unit of DNA, this cell is called an HFR cell. HFR stands for high frequency of recombination. These cells are capable of doing something interesting where they still have this DNA from the original fertility plasma, so they can still form a sex pilla to connect from the HFR cell, which we will draw its newly integrated chromosome. The sex pilla allows the HFR cell to connect to an F minus cell. This F minus cell, I've drawn its chromosomal DNA in blue simply so we can distinguish between the original chromosomal DNA of this cell in black, the fertility plasma DNA that's still in red as it's been throughout, and then the chromosomal DNA of this new recipient F minus cell. What happens at this point is the fertility plasma DNA replicates so that the DNA from both the, the red DNA, the fertility plasma DNA, as well as the chromosomal DNA from this HFR cell is able to copy itself and then move into the F minus cell. What we get at this point, the result is we still have this HFR cell that has its chromosomal DNA and then the integrated fertility plasma DNA, but we also have this F minus cell has undergone recombination between its original chromosome and some of the chromosomal DNA that it got from the HFR cell. What this looks like is it still has its original chromosomal DNA in blue, but it's picked up some of the chromosomal DNA that was copied from the HFR cell that came through the sex pillow. What we get here is a recombinant cell still an F minus cell. It doesn't have any of this red DNA that came from the fertility plasma. But it still has acquired extra genes, which means that if this cell had any kind of extra DNA already incorporated into its chromosome originally, it's now been integrated into the chromosome of this F minus cell. Again, this means that this F minus cell while it's not capable of further conjugation on its own, because it's missing the fertility plasma DNA, it still may have acquired additional functionality in the form of virulence factors or antibiotic resistance or toxins that it can now produce simply because it's gained.